Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Risk Assess, our online risk assessment program. To log in, simply use the username Unly and the password Unly Science. Click login and that will bring you to the home page for our school. As a quick orientation, you can see that you can start a blank risk assessment for a new practical booking, view the laboratory schedule for today, tomorrow, a week in advance in the next four weeks, or you can select any dates and put in a particular date range if you're searching for a practical that you know was conducted at a particular time, but you can't remember the name. Under re recent risk assessments, you can see bookings by other people. So if I go to the see more option here, I can see the history of all of the pracs that have been booked over the last little while and easily search for a practical that may fit in with my current teaching load. So I'll just go back. You can also search for recent risk assessments by author or teacher. If you know someone else has run a particular practical you're interested in conducting by year group, bearing in mind that all of our year eights should be doing the same practicals, all of our year nines the same practicals, and our year tens within their topic rotations the same practicals. You can also search by experiment name, um, if you're searching for something that may have been run in previous years and not booked recently, or also procedure and reference. You can change the date range to anything within the last 18 months, right up until the last week, the last month, or in fact any date, which will take you all the way back to when we first started our subscription for the program. So, the main two ways that you would go about booking a practical would be start a blank risk assessment. In general, I would only use this if you know for sure that this practical or experiment has not been run before at Unley High School. It's far easier to take and edit a risk assessment that's already been produced by another teacher. So today I'm wanting to book a redox titration, which I know has been used in the past. So I'm simply going to type redox into the experiment name field and search for that experiment. I happen to know that this is a year 12 practical that I'm wanting to book so as I have a look through the list here I can see that redox titration comes up in the list so I'm just going to click on that one have a quick look that is indeed the one that I'm looking for so I'm wanting to book that for myself there's a few options across the top here create modifiable copy allows me to generate a new risk assessment which will be pre-filled with the items to be prepared, um, equipment to be used, etc. An author's update was if this was actually already my booking and I was wanting to make a quick update for Melna, for example, a new piece of equipment that I'd suddenly realized I hadn't included in my original booking or I wanted to change the room number or the particular lesson I was wanting to run a prac in. So we'll only use author's update to update your own risk assessment booking rather than to create a new booking. You can also obviously add review notes after the event uh, to assist with people running the practical again in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and click create modifiable copy. I'm going to leave the author as Alice Patterson. That doesn't need to be changed. The experiment name is the same. And I'm going to go ahead and put my name in here as the actual teacher of the class. Year 12 chemistry remains the same. Teacher codes here, you can grab a quick explanation of the codes, but in general, if you are a fully qualified teacher for the subject area you're teaching in, you will have a 1 as your teacher code, and Melna is qualified as a 1 rating as well. So I'm wanting to book this practical for room 239, the chemistry lab, lesson 1 and 2, on Thursday morning. So just by clicking on the little calendar, I'm able to navigate through until next Thursday morning. And because I happen to know Alice is also going to be running that practical, I'm going to go ahead and book her class in as well. Obviously, I'd let her know I'm doing that. No scheduling notes, but you may wish to put something in here if you're doing a particular demonstration that you needed assistance with. You could put a little note in here um, for uh, Melna, please join our class at 9.30 if possible to assist might be a particular scheduling note you might have or any other note that you think is relevant okay i'm just going to go through and review 
the list here and match it to my task sheet, make sure it contains everything that I need, which is fine. And then I just want to go through and check that every piece of equipment that's been uh, listed here has also been searched and added in the equipment, chemicals and living organisms for risk assessment section. And I can actually see that burettes need to be added on here just to make sure mine is really clear on that. Fantastic. The reason that we list as well as going through and searching in the equipment database is the list simply gives Melna a database. Uh, Sorry, the list simply gives Melna an overview of what's going to be required for the practical, whereas searching in the database allows all of the relevant safety information for each piece of equipment to be brought to light. So we'll just go through, check the chemicals um, at the correct concentration level have been selected. And it's important also to list chemicals produced. So uh, many chemical reactions in particular will actually generate new products, as you would know. Um, and sometimes these products can have particular safety considerations of their own. So it's important not only to list the chemicals that you'll be starting with for a particular experiment, but also chemicals that could be produced even as byproducts along the way to ensure that we put the correct procedures in place for disposing of those chemicals. Okay, so now I'm simply just going to go down to generate risk assessment. And I can review the information, including all of the safety information. Scroll right down. There's a checklist here just so that you're aware of what you're signing off on, that you've read and understood the potential hazards, that you've read and understood the material safety data sheets for all of the chemicals to be used and produced. And this is really important, particularly if you're using a chemical for the first time. Melna generally does provide the safety data sheets for us with practical bookings as um, a paper printout or a laminated copy. So it's important that you do have a read through of that to make sure you understand, for example, any disposal instructions, any instructions if a student was to get this particular chemical on their skin, in their eyes, and all of those kinds of things. Um, the risk assessment requires you to consider risks, including fire, explosion, sharp objects, etc. So make sure you do have a read through of that and that will enable you to make an assessment of the risk as being either low, medium, high or extreme. With this particular practical, because of the types of chemicals that we're using, we have previously assessed it at medium risk and I'm going to leave that the same. If you're not totally confident on, on doing the risk assessment, there are some hyperlinked documents here that you can have a read through which help you um, with assessing that level of risk. So anything other than a green for go, low risk rating requires you to add particular control measures. So um, I'm going to update those measures, safety glasses and lab coat, obviously are um, general uh, safety precautions that we put in place for most of our practicals. And I'm just going to say um, teacher to explain particular risks associated with chemicals to be used. Save those and I can now go ahead and sign this electronically which simply means typing in my full name pre-filled for me and signing. Once I've done that this is sent automatically to Melna as a practical booking and so that she can review the safety information as well and there's a section here where Melna goes through and certifies the safety information as well. If you'd like to, you can email this to yourself, save it as a PDF or print it, but it will always be saved on the system for you as well. So if we go right back up to the top of the page and now go home, I can check on the progress of my booking by going to view the laboratory schedule for the next week. And if I scroll all the way through to Thursday, I can see that indeed the booking is there. Unlike these other practicals that have been booked further in advance, mine is not yet prepared as uh, the little checkbox here is remains unchecked. 
um, which is no surprise given this is the weekend. So, um, but I can come back in and check the day before if I'm concerned that perhaps it hasn't been set up or that there might be any dramas with it and just make sure that Melna has in fact prepared that and it's all good to go. Just back to home. Just a couple of final things to point out. Um, there is safety information that you can actually search for. So um, if, for example, I was particularly worried about this um, potassium permanganate, I've never used it before. And before even booking a practical, I wanted to find out what the inherent risks were with it. I could actually go into the safety information on chemicals and have a read through and, and find out whether that's something that I was wanting to go ahead and use. Uh, there's also um, information down the bottom on the labelling of chemicals if you're wondering on the labelling system and wanting to understand it. There's also a user guide for risk assess here which steps you through the process as a paper copy and that's also available in the Science Google Drive. Um, can be useful to have a check in to risk assessment news. For example, they upload from time to time things like safe dissection activities. You can have a read through uh, if you're teaching some kind of biology topic at the moment and get some tips on how to conduct something like that uh, in a really safe way. Okay, that's an overview. I hope that's helpful and let me know if there's anything else about risk assess that I can put into a tutorial that would help you with using it. Thank you.